Good evening and welcome to another enlightening edition of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. And now here's your erudite and informative host, Voice of Doom. All right, thank you, Mr. Announcer. I'm going to try to have a little calm because someone's going to have to stay calm while everybody else loses it. Uh, I'm going to do as many diatribes as I can do as far as I, I always will be able to comment on whatever is happening day by day hour by hour, but I feel like time is short. I don't feel like anybody's going to see these videos. I don't think anybody's going to believe me. And I ain't no Jesus is coming soon. I know all about that. I know more than a lot of people about that. So Jesus, I could get into that. I could do like 10 or 20 episodes and explain exactly how that all was it's very simple but hard uh, i wanted to spend this episode being a little educational but before i do that i need to vent on petri dish of putrefied excrement of a diseased jackal because it just seems like i get a little myth because it was a whole segment of society i mean Half of them thought that this person who was a businessman who may not have done everything to the correct, dotted every I, maybe he had to play hardball once in a while. So what? He became president. He's smart. He knows what he's doing. He's rough around the edges. He says things off the cuff like me. I couldn't be president. I'd be impeached before I took the oath of office just for whatever being uncouth, not dressing correctly. But if this guy in Great Britain can have that haircut, then I think anything goes now. Uh, I'm just mad because it seems to be like everybody was against this guy and saying he was an agent of Russia, which was baseless. It was based on the gossamer wings it had nothing there wasn't anything it was vapor they made up stuff and then they kept on expounding on it until they had to convince themselves it was true so any little thing oh you met somebody that had a russian gardener so uh you're suspect it was ridiculous and now the consequences you're seeing aren't just like you're humiliated and ridiculed the consequences you're seeing is millions hundreds of millions of people dying now get ready. I'm really mad because you're putting down this businessman who was doing his best, and he was probably the best president since George Washington, but never mind that. Now you're getting all behind, well, you're not behind him now. Nobody with a sane mind could be. They'd have to be committed. But you were behind somebody who seems to be an agent for the enemy because he gave biometrics to the Taliban so that they could make sure that the right Americans get through the gate. I mean, this guy's a genius, man. Biometrics, do you understand what that means? He gave the identities. They can use all the technology that we left at Bagram. Don't you understand what's going on? $85 billion worth of equipment was left at Bagram for some apparent reason. Now, okay. Well, we left it with the Afghan army and we trusted them because they were high on heroin only at night and they weren't really that high during the day, so we figured that we'd leave them a bunch of Black Hawk helicopters and like, you know, a thousand AK. Oh, I don't know. I'm not into weaponry. I could check it out and let you know exactly what they have. But I'm not going to because you know it already mercenaries are going to have to go in that's what i'm hearing in the last five minutes on the news that if they he actually leaves on the 31st then mercenaries and they may call them charities 
And don't get me into the 80s and the 90s with, uh, you know, whatever the hell it was. Blackwater and all that crap. I could go into great detail about all that. How charities are mixed in with shadow corporations that work out of different countries for their various, you know, nefarious schemes. And I know everybody in it. So if you're a big guy, I don't, I, and you know who you are, I know what happened. I might be one of the few people that do. And it doesn't matter. I have no ill feelings. You were probably thinking you were doing the right thing. And I think I know, I think you know who I'm talking to. And it was in the last administration. I'll say no more. But I am having my beverages neater right now because I'm a bit upset at this confluence but instead of railing on against Petri dish who can't get worse but he will somehow he finds a way to do something wrong that's exponentially worse than the last day every day oh yeah eminent attack likely I mean when they say things like that you know there's going to be an explosion they did it last time before this last fiasco. And I saw the pictures of those people that died, and it was a very mixed crowd. So I don't think they have to worry about CRT in the mill. I don't even want to. It's too late for that. Come on, you guys are blind. I'm serious. They don't call me the voice of doom because I'm, you know, saying, oh, that's just a stick. No, doom. Soon. 22. <clears throat> Paki Sharma is a very sophisticated newscaster editor and she is pretty much in charge of gravitas and wyan i mean she's not in charge but she reports the news she doesn't report a bunch of stuff and satire and i mean people shouldn't be laughing anymore i don't care there's times for jokes if we have times for jokes in a year or two then we can laugh again. But right now, things are kind of bad. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get into something else. Sharia. Everybody says Sharia and they think it's all those savages. They do Sharia law. Now, Sharia is the law for Islam. Do you understand? And I'll explain it to you. So don't get up in an uproar. Islam's legal and spiritual system, and I'm just paraphrasing Paul K. Sharma, who probably knows a hell of a lot more than any of us about this. Islam's legal and spiritual system, it is divine and philosophical. Divine because it's God's will, and philosophical because it's human understanding of divine will. Sharia literally means clear wall wait I can't read my writing clear well oh clear well trodden path to water I gotta write better or get or I don't know I just write things down thick understanding F-I-Q-H equals understanding, divine, infallible, unchangeable. It sounds like Buddhism with the mystic law. But things got defunct. They got, not defunct, they bifurcated, they split apart. It's based on the Quran, it's based on the Hadith, it's based on the Sunnah, Muhammad's words. Now, there's different sects. I have six minutes. I think I can do this. There's major sects, the Sunni and Shia. We've heard of them since the 70s. Sunnis and Shias at each other's throats. Lebanon, come on. It's been a mess. Let's just put the Shias aside because they're the Iranians. And they're very strict. And they follow their own strict rules of Sharia. The Sunni have the, I'm going to go fast, Hambali, Hambaki or Hambali and Maliki are the strictest. 
Shafi'i, Malak, Maliki is African. Shafi'i is Southeast Asian and he's African. Hanafi is the one that pe most people do. It's consensus and independent. They just want to practice their religion in peace. They want to follow the Quran as they see that Muhammad was a peaceful person. He didn't want to cut people's heads off. And if you want to take everything literally, then do it in the Bible too. Because the God that people worship in the Bible was pretty vicious. And if you read the Bible, you'd realize that. Okay, so we have different sects. Now, it's the Sunni, I think it's the Hanabaki, I can't read my writing, that are the most draconian. And none, none of that was in the Quran. They've just interpreted over thousands of years or hundreds of years to their own liking. Now, government, religious religion mixed with governance is not a good idea. That's according to Palki Sharma, and I believe her. I agree with her. Post-colonial Africa, okay, Asia, Africa, Southeast or Middle East, all of that area. They were all colonizing in the centuries before that, and they were all racing to see who could grab more territory. That's why there was so much bloodshed in like the 1800s because people, countries like Portugal and Germany thought they didn't have their share of the pie, and that's why they started doing encroachments to try to colonialize because they saw that Spain had colonialized South America. You know, I don't want to go into all that. The colonization, post-colonial period, 1932, Saudi Arabia became a theocratic monarchy. 79, Iran became an Islamic Republican Republic. 96, the Taliban took over Afghanistan as a Sharia, I don't know what their exact sect is, Talibs. Leave. I mean, very strict. It's like, if you don't believe what we believe, then we cut your head off. And it's used politically. And that's the worst thing you can do, from what I've seen in history, is to take religion and use it politically. It's going to cause nothing but bloodshed. And it, we don't have to do it in this century because we're not savages in the medieval times during the Spanish Inquisition when you put people on the rack. But these guys are back in the 7th century, okay? And they're seeing a planet that has less people, and all the people that are here are following their law. And Petri dish, to get back to the old subject, is making it very easy for them. It's like, I'm going to make it easy for you to actually get what you want. I'm going to give you lots of weapons, night vision goggles, Black Hawk hel helicopters, AK whatevers, M16s, um, biometric information, lists on paper. Let these people through. It's absolute anarchy there, and he's thinking bureaucratic, you know, committees, and here, you know, come on. When it falls apart, it's going to be fast. They're trying to hold it together. And I don't see how past the 31st, if he actually leaves, I don't see how that whole thing can hold. I don't see how it can hold. If it holds, then there's something wrong with all of us. And I'm not going to put up with it. And I have more on here. Let me see if I can fit it in. Most of the punishments were not advocated by the prophets, especially women and women's rights and conquest mindset. That was made out of whole cloth by interpretations. That's how religions go. You get the writings from the master. It's misinterpreted through the centuries until you finally have Nazi Germany. <sighs> terrorists, more faithful. Yeah, the terrorists consider themselves special. They are going to give their lives for their cause, for God, for Allah, and they believe it. Religion is a pretext. 
Religion's law must not have a place in constitutional government. That was Paki Sharma. I'm not going to take credit for any of that, but I will take credit for the colorful interpretation that I gave, because it was brilliant. And if everybody would listen to this, we'd have a much better world, but they're not going to. Nobody will. So here's to the end coming soon, and I mean it. And I'm a little... Didn't even drink at all. But yeah. I will probably do one tomorrow because it'll be much worse when the next, next explosion comes. So have a uh, survivable evening as best you can. Thanks.